everybody. You're probably wondering, why is my background different? Well, that's because I've moved. I've moved to a new flat. The background <laughs> is temporary. I try to decorate it as much as possible to make it look nice. <laughs> Strawberries come with me. Uh, uh, moving boxes, nice Mickey Mouse painting back there. And everything's still a bit crazy, but I've still got time to make a video. So welcome to a Brit in Germany. Yeah, you can probably hear me echoing right now. Echo, echo, echo. That's because this room is completely empty, apart from this stuff. This week, I'm gonna talk about what I did to find somewhere to live in Germany. The search process, the cost process of renting, and information on the contract. But before all that, we're gonna do that cheeky little quiz question. This week's quiz question, <coughs> dusty in here. This week's question is, which Stadtteil exists in Germany? Stadtteil is a part of a city. Is it A, a haarloser Hund, a hairless dog? Is it B, Linda Katze? the blind cat, or is it C, Bunte Kuh, a colourful cow? I'll give you a hint, it has something to do with an animal. <laughs> okay, um, let's crack on with the video. Did you know that most German people rent? They don't buy their own place, they rent. Mm. I'm also renting, <laughs> yes, getting in the German spirit. First of all, the search to find somewhere to live in Germany. If you can use property search websites, I'll put some links in the description box. Or you can find somewhere to live through word of mouth. Word of mouth is excellent. We found this place through word of mouth and we managed to be the first ones to view it. We were lucky. Yes, it's a bit of luck involved in word of mouth, but if you ask the right people, you're bound to find somewhere to live. <laughs> you can also look in the newspaper, classic newspaper. If you are taking over somebody else's lease, somebody else's rent, you're called the Nachmieter, and that means the after renter, word for word, <laughs> Nachmieter. So I'm a Nachmieter because this place was rented before and I took over. Now when you're searching on the property websites or through the newspapers, there'll be a lot of code words. We found a Vierzimmer Wohnung, mm -hmm. which is shortened to a 4, a ZI and a WHG. Bathrooms and kitchens are not included in the count of rooms. Very different to England. If the flat description says it has an EBK, that means an Einbaukuche, and that means a built-in kitchen. This is quite a rare thing, I think, because in Germany and in a few other European countries, people take their kitchens with them when they move out. So most of the time you'll walk into a flat and the kitchen will be empty, just a few pipes sticking out of the wall. And you'll be thinking, oh gosh, there's no kitchen. Don't be too shocked because that is the way things are. You can either get a stove and a sink from the landlord or go ahead and put your own kitchen in yourself which is what we did. Unfortunately, it's not here at the moment, it comes in a month. So we're cooking on a little hot plate and using the microwave a lot. <laughs> if there is a kitchen in the flat, you might be offered the chance to buy it from the current tenant. That's also possible. There's a helicopter flying over, so it's a bit noisy. <laughs> Property is measured in quadrat meter, which means meters squared. That's an important thing to look for and one of the first things that you'll want to check when you're looking at the listings on the internet or the newspaper. And regarding floors, sometimes you might be expected to put your own floor in as well and that can get expensive. For me, as an English person, I expected the floor to be here when we moved in. The floor is usually always in the flat unless it's obviously broken or rotting. Broken floor? No. The lights will probably be gone. The fridge just turned on. There's so many noises around here. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> now, how much does it all cost to rent a flat here in Germany? In general, the more south you go in Germany, the more expensive it gets. So for me, up here in the north, it's quite, not cheap, but it's quite reasonable to rent somewhere. But in Munich, for example, the rent is really high. Yeah. ka -ching. There's a few costs involved in renting, yes. The first cost is the Kaltmieter, the cold rent. This is the monthly rent for the property. Then there are the Nebenkosten or the Wohngeld. That means additional costs like lift maintenance, if there is a lift, trash collection, gardening, sometimes also 
a parking space is in the Nabon Koston as well. The Nabon Koston depends on the size of the flat and what's available to you. Also, there's electricity and gas bills, but they aren't included usually in the Nabon Koston. Sometimes heating is in the Nabon Koston, but for us it's separate, and every year we get a letter telling us if we've paid too much, and if we have, then we get that money back at the end of the year. Finally, the VARM meter, the warm rent, is the Nabon Koston and the Kalt meter, Su Salmon, together. You have to pay a security deposit, a calcion. For us, it was three months worth of rent. This is so the landlord has an insurance. If you break something in the flat, he can use your calcion to pay for it. Important note about the calcion, it cannot go into the landlord's personal bank account. It has to go into a joint account. Now, the tough part, the contract. Signing stuff. Before you sign anything, you have to make sure that there's no damage to the property inside and potentially outside on the balcony. If there is, you have to make sure that it's written in the contract. Otherwise, you could end up paying for it when you leave the flat because the landlord thinks that you caused it, even though it was already here when you moved in. So if there's a hole in the wall or a dead cat in the apartment causing a stink, Make sure that's in the contract. Take photos of damage because that's excellent evidence. You need it all documented so that when you leave the flat, you aren't paying for it when you leave. The contract will also give details about the house ordnum. House ordnum are general rules that apply to you as a resident of the building. So that means that you may have to be quiet at certain hours. For us, it's between 12 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You have to be quiet because that's the peaceful time. Also, the house ordnum tells you where you have to put your rubbish, whether or not satellite dishes are allowed. Also, regarding the cleaning of the stairways, the Trepan house, and outside as well. Sometimes you are able to pay a company to clean for you so that you don't have to do it yourself because then you're not responsible for anyone falling over on ice in the winter time. Or in autumn, leaves are wet, you won't be responsible for anyone slipping over on the leaves ah! because you've paid for someone to do it for you. Also, the contract will tell you whether or not you can have pets. You most probably need to give written notice if you do want to have a pet. Fish, cat, gerbil, ants, whatever. Tell them first. Aha. The contract has a notice period, a Kundigungsfrist. <laughs> Let's say I want to leave this flat and I have three months Kundigungsfrist on my contract. This means that I still have to pay three months rent and I can't just leave tomorrow and not pay. Also keys, you aren't allowed to just copy keys. You have to generally tell the landlord that you want to make a copy of the key. If you lose keys, it can be expensive. You might have to end up replacing your neighbor's keys as well because your neighbor's keys can access the keller, can access the DAC board and the attic, that sort of thing. And also keep in mind when you move out, the landlord may ask you to do some painting to uh, bring it back to the standard it was when you moved in. So if there's a big stain on the wall, then you'll probably have to paint that. Try and keep everything, you know, as it was when you moved in to avoid extra work and expense. Yeah. For me, um, I had to paint the old flat because the landlord said a few walls were needing some work. And if you don't do a good job, the landlord will make you pay for a professional to come in and do it again. So all your hard work would have gone to waste. Oh, no. <laughs> And that is a Brit in Germany's mini guide to finding a flat. If you have a German speaking friend, take them along with you. A friend, a neighbor, someone from work. Yeah, just drag someone off the street if you can. The quiz question answer, the Stadtteil in Germany. Strange names, yes, but one of them is true. And I can reveal the true one is C. Look to who? Yeah, colorful cow. It's a Stadtteil in Lübeck. Yeah, I'd really like to live in Bundaku, but I've just moved in here, so I'm not moving out again, no. It's true, like Moo, the Bundaku. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. I'll be back again next week with another video. Maybe I'll be sitting on a chair by then. Let's see. See you then. Bye!